In this video, I will show you all the painted minis from the game Chronicles of Drunagor. There are more than 120 minis in that game. Some of them are actually really huge. It took me two weeks to paint all those minis during the weekend and after work. For that, I've used a simple, cheap, fast technique inspired by Awakened Realms Sun Drop and Lazy Square Games Storm Brush. It is only two or three steps. It requires no talents and it takes less than four minutes per mini. At the end of the video, there will be a tutorial detailing those techniques with a couple of minis. What you are seeing here is the heroes included in the game. There are 21 of them and they all play differently. Anyways, the heroes were painted like this. I, uh, step 1. I quickly painted the base color, crystal blue, with a huge makeup brush. Step 2. I then apply a shade wash all over them. It is a dark liquid that looks like coffee. When it dries, it creates fake shadows. That step is actually optional. Step 3, the final step, it take, I, I take a bright color, it is uh, void chill blue here, and I dry brush it all over the edge and raise the detail of the sculpt. The final result is a model with fake painted illumination. At that small scale, the light does not uh, react in the same way as our scale. So for a mini to look right, we need to paint the shadows and highlights on the model. Don't worry, I will show you all of this in the tutorial at the end. So this is the Demon Lord. It was painted uh, dragon red as the base color with a dark tone wash on top of it and finally a uh, dry brushing with uh, pure red. Scout of Darkness. I think they were prime black and there is only a dry brush uh, applied to, it, to them. No shade here, but I could be wrong about that. Dead Messenger. Uh, here I, I messed around a lot, so uh, I base painted them, I applied a shade, some dry brush, then probably another shade, and then another dry brush, so I don't remember, but I messed a lot with those. Ravagers. So this is simply the three step technique so the base color, the wash, and uh, finally the same color plus mixed with white to make them uh, brighter for the dry brushing. Uh, these are the lady claws. Uh, I use Citadel Screamer Pink as the base color and uh, with a wash and finally the same Screamer Pink with mixed with white. Uh, we don't see the detail here because the camera doesn't pick the contrast and it fused, it melded all the, the colors together. Uh, this is the Undead King, uh, the final boss. Uh, I used a zenithal highlight, so it was primed black and I painted white from above to create shadows. Then I, I, I used a super thin and diluted deep blue on top of it as the base color. And finally moon dust as uh, dry brushing. These are the Shadow Guardians. The miniatures uh, do look uh, 10 times better in reality than on the camera. The camera doesn't show the contrast and the details. These are the shadow pane. Uh, this is prime black and dry brush, no shade here. So this is the fastest way you can paint your minis. Shadow Knights. They were, uh, the base color is metal plate mail. Then I applied a uh, red, green and purple shade on each of them so they have a different wash. Uh, a red, red wash, green wash, purple wash. And finally a silver highlight uh, dry brushing. Skeleton Archer. So this is skeleton bone and seraphim sepia shade. And finally mummy robe for dry brushing. So this is the base color is uh, uh, brown with uh, a dark shade on top of them and finally a Vallejo uh, Japanese uniform. It's a, it looks like an orange or a yellowish orange for the dry brush and it came included with a Vallejo wood and leather pack. Walking hours. 
So this is only a dry brush on top of a black uh, prime mini. So there is no shade here. Well, I don't think so. Or may maybe there was on top of it. But the main thing here is, uh, is a dry brush on top of black. The rotten flesh here, I did something really special. And it was a mistake. I didn't wait for the paint to dry before applying the wash. So the wash was applied on top of wet paint. And it created a disgusting mess, which looks amazing in that case. Executioner. So this is wolf gray. Uh, dark uh, wash on top of them and finally uh, a light blue I guess for dry brushing corrupted worms with uh, this is uh, I guess it's, it's another final boss or a mini boss women day with his little babies I show uh, how I've painted them in the tutorial at the end so there's no need for me to explain it here Dark Vampires. So this is corn red as the base color and the dark shade and finally gold uh, dry brushing. So all the edges and raised details are gold. The, pi the camera doesn't pick it up here, it's, uh, but they look amazing in, in, uh, in reality. Abomination. So this is Barbarian Flesh as the base color. Flesh shade on top of them. Uh, and finally Mummy Robe for the dry brushing highlight. They look a lot dusty. Shadow Mistresses. Th they were prime uh, coral white with a blue shade wash. So the shade is blue. And uh, finally, a pale blue uh, for dry brushing. It gives them a surreal look in, uh, in person. The familiars. This is brown base color with a gray dry brush and finally a strong tone on top of them. So the wash, the shade wash is the last step here. Bone Reapers. Uh, this is the, the usual three steps. I, I've used the makeup brush here. It goes a lot faster to, uh, to paint the base color and also to um, to do the dry brushing. Makeup brushes are amazing to do dry brush. It goes a lot faster. Corrupted Farmer. So this is primed black with a dry brush of, of a yellowish brown and there's no shade. At least I don't think because the shadows are so dark. I think this is what you're actually seeing is the, the, prim the black primer underneath. Our last two heroes, Anduriel and Lord Rat. Lord Rat was primed black with a silver dry brush and finally a null oil shade as the last step. Commander Thern and Twins, I show them in the tutorial so um, uh, the only thing that is different for those small monsters is that I, I, I've done a, a zenithal highlight uh, on top of uh, as the first step for them. Shadow Cultist, it's Grimoire purple uh, with a dark shade and finally another purplish color. I don't remember which one. Or maybe it was just purple mixed with white. I don't remember. But they look a lot better in, uh, in person than on camera. The camera doesn't see anything. Haral Ezek, it was primed with a natural highlight and then I applied uh, a super thin Jokero orange for the skin. Skeleton bones uh, for fangs and teeth, Reichlin flesh shade on the skin, and finally glistening blood effect in the mouth so it looks wet. So this is the tutorial part of the video. What I'm showing here is the fake illumination for the dragon. I spray painted white from underneath the model, so this is what I call Nadiral highlight as opposed to Zenithal highlight from the Zenith. Now the light is spray painted from the Nadir from underneath the model. These are some of the minis uh, I'm going to paint in the, this very video. As you can see, they're not very interesting right now. Especially uh, from a, a 
at, at the distance that we actually see them on the table with a, a real light we don't see the detail uh, so it's mostly just a gray shape we don't see uh, the shadows we see them right now because uh, the light is uh, placed very well and we're really zoomed in on the mini this one is not so mini I think this one is the best uh, of the bunch this is the the best mini from Chronicle of Dunagor. As usual, the first step uh, for the minis is to prime them so that the paint uh, actually uh, will stay on the mini. So I, I use a sticky putty to place the minis on, uh, on pieces of wood. There are uh, things that we use to, sh to shake the paint or uh, to stir the, the, the paint. Uh, I have plenty of them and uh, I also use sometimes cardboard or other kind of rigid objects but wood is better because cardboard would eventually uh, start to bend and move around. So I find, I find the best way to paint them is uh, to spray paint them is to not to lose too, too much paint is to make them as close as possible while being able to reach the, the hard part of the model. I'm priming black here uh, only for this model uh, because I, I want to use the uh, zenithal highlight technique. So I'm gonna paint a fake illumination on the model with uh, only the, the spray paint. Another reason to use black is if you don't want to use a quick shade on uh, the model, uh, you want to do the laziest technique, so you paint the model black like I did uh, on some models. You paint them black and then you dry brush with the, the base color and since uh, the black uh, will get stuck uh, in the lower recesses of the model the paint brush will not reach those uh, areas so it will you will see super dark shadows and you don't use a quick shade so it's only bl paint prime black and uh, uh, a dry brushing of uh, the base color so here i do the actual uh, zenithal highlight but instead of using white, as most people do, I'm using the base color that I'm going to use. So this is the final color of the worm. It's uh, Army Painter Desert Yellow. And I also have the same, uh, the same color, the exact color, in the, uh, a bottle dropper. So I have the spray paint, spray paint version and I have the bottle uh, version. So you'll see later uh, what, why, why I do that. So this is the little babies, uh, and this time I'm not using the zenithal highlight, so I only paint uh, the base color on them, and, and it's the final color. So if you if you can uh, try to get uh, the exact uh, prime color, uh, primer color, otherwise you will have to prime them uh, gray or something, and then uh, waste a lot of time painting them individually with a brush, uh, which is really really. Uh, Low. Here I'm going to show you how I mix my paint uh, uh, in the bottle so that it's not uh, all crusty and uh, and I have the exact intended color on the on the inside the bottle. So I uh, th these are called amatite. Uh, they are a rock that is uh, neutral chemically, so it won't it won't interact with the paint inside. So they're really uh, they're cheap on Amazon. Uh, compared to ball steel and um, they're really heavy so they're uh, as you can see it's on, it's a uh, it's 100 piece for 13 dollars so and I and I also made uh, with a, a reciprocating saw I made this adapter with a, a junk um, piece of metal uh, uh, riveted on it so that I can uh, uh, just put my my um, my bottles inside and I have, as you can see, th there's two spacer, one for Army Panther bottle and one for uh, for uh, Citadel uh, bottles. And this is simply a Velcro. So this is really cheap and it's it's really, really effective. I think this is the best uh, paint paper you can get. So 
another thing I'm uh, using, uh, I, I discovered, discovered that like um, a year ago. It's a wet palette. So this is um, cheap. This is just a, a cover uh, for a Tupperware. You can you use uh, whatever you can find uh, to keep it wet. So I'm using here a chamois or a, a towel or something that can can stay wet. And you you place a parchment paper on top of it. And everything, every paint you put on it will never will never dry. Never, never, never. As long as there is water on the sponge underneath. So uh, like that, uh, you can work all day and take your time and uh, the paint will not get dry. So here I'm mixing, um, uh, using a mix, mixing, mixing medium. This is not white. This is, this will uh, thin and uh, get the, the paint really, really thin and uh, diluted. So um, I do that because I, I'm using the, uh, I'm, I'm doing the Zenithal Highlight technique. And you can also use, uh, I think it's called a lam Lamia. Uh, I'll, I'll have to check uh, what's the Lamian, Lam Lamian oil from uh, Citadel, something like that. It's also uh, a mixing mix medium that is really oily. And you mix that with the paint and now the paint is super thin. So the goal here is to uh, see the, the black and the, the underneath the paint. And normally they would be white, but in this case, this is the actual color on top of it. So I made a mistake here. I, I, it, the paint was so thin that uh, it took me uh, off camera. It took me like 20 minutes of uh, me returning back to uh, to the model every five minutes and and brush it again to remove the the, the paint that that has pulled in the recesses. So it was actually a lot more work than on camera. But it, this is only because uh, the paint was too thin, too liquid, so it, I had to work on it for like 20 minutes. But in the end, the result was uh, really amazing, so maybe it, it was an a happy accident. Because we really do, do show, we, we show the black underneath. We really see the zenithal highlight uh, effect. So I'm, I'm also using here a makeup brush. Makeup brush are super cheap and they're the best kept secret uh, for uh, miniature painters. Uh, they're, they're, they're big and they're uh, impossible to destroy and they cost like uh, $5 for 10. So um, now that I've finished applying the base color, you can already see the zenithal highlight effect on the model. Uh, I'm using... Uh, a shade that is a uh, kind of earthy in tone. Normally for all the other minis, uh, I, I've used um, mainly uh, Army Painter Quick Shade uh, Dark. I think this is the best one for, at least for the monster. So here it's not, it's not a paint, it's a liquid and it's a f it has a physical property. So the goal here is not to paint or to put it everywhere on the model but it's to to drown drown the, the, the drown the the model in that liquid so that uh, the liquid can reach uh, by gravity all the the little, little holes and uh, details so you put you need to put a lot of that liquid on the model then you need to remove the excess and sometimes, like you'll see soon, uh, you have to, to put more or start over again because you, you've removed too much of it. So It's difficult to see because when it, it, it takes, a, it takes a, about six hours to, to get dry and it doesn't look the same when it's dry. So it's difficult to see what it will look at the end. But uh, the trick here is to put a lot to begin with. So you, you, you put a lot of uh, the, the shade on, on the model and then remove the excess. And if you remove too much, you put it back a little. Army Panther actually recommend that you put the 
the whole mini miniature inside the bottle. They they sell bigger uh, they sell bigger bottle to do exactly that. So you're not you're not forced to use your brush. You can actually put it in the literally drown them in the uh, inside the the bottle. And then you suspend that upside down for a while, and then you put it, you put them back upward. And they... If you want, you can only do the the, the shading and stop there, and then do the the highlight uh, dry brushing after that. Thing, uh, if you want to do it, if you want to do the miniature faster, only choose one color for all of them. So you choose one base color, one dry brush color, and uh, one uh, shade. So th the the fact that I they change uh, technique for every group of monster, it takes a uh, much longer to, to work. So as you can see, the they uh, they look good right now, but uh, there is no there's not much of uh, an highlight on them. So now we have the shadows, but we don't have any highlights. So already they, they look better. Uh, so I, I think I'm using here uh, Vallejo uh, Dark Sand. This is stupid, this is not dark, but they call it that. So you need to put the paint uh, on all the brush. Uh, you need to put a lot of paint on that brush. And then you remove it all, absolutely all, which is crazy. The first time you do that, you think this is stupid. This, this, uh, how can this work? But it does work. So there is not much paint on the. Well, there's no paint, but uh, there is enough for uh, for it to to uh, uh, to work. So you grind and you 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 touch all the edges of the model. So you need to remove absolutely the, all the paint and then you scrape the model with it. You can really go hard with that technique if you want, as long as there is not too much paint on the, on the brush. So you just tickle the model everywhere and eventually it will look great kind of magic because it doesn't make sense but the result is uh, really impressive combined with the sh shader the, the quick shade the result is amazing for uh, so little effort the problem with miniatures is that they're so small that the light doesn't react uh, or uh, yeah it doesn't doesn't react the, the same as at our scale so uh, for example these minis the light is so powerful that it would flood uh, every detail, so they don't cast their own shadows on, the, on themselves because they're, they're, they are too small. So we have to paint the light on them. And that, that is probably the, the, the mistake that, that newbies uh, do, um, is that they try to get the color uh, right on the model. So they, they try to get the, the face with the um, uh, the right skin color and the clothes the right color the boots uh, black boots or whatever but this is not as much important as uh, the shadows and the highlight uh, because if you only paint the color uh, they will look cartoony they will look like toys they won't look like miniatures they won't look real so the trick is to uh, manually paint the illumination on the model it is it's to apply uh, Imagine the, the, this mi these minis at our scale, how the light would react on them and paint that exact light, the shadow, the highlight and everything on that small model. Because in the end, uh, even if you paint all the right color at the right place, 
uh, on the table it doesn't really matter because uh, we don't see that and we don't care so the only person that will uh, be bothered by the, the colors it will be you and no one else so here I guess I could have paint a different color all the claws and things like that but uh, on the table at uh, two feet one feet two feet uh, it doesn't matter so uh, people like uh, Squinmar or they paint for the camera they don't paint for the table and and these guys they don't play with the miniatures they only paint them and they watch them they expose them they they, they take picture of the minis they don't play with them so it is important that uh, you don't take too much time to, uh, <laughs> to paint them because it's also frustrating. So the the less time you you paint them, the more time you can play with your game. Actually, you should start with the when you start painting the mini, you should start with the heroes you're actually playing with, and then the first monster that you encounter, and then move on from there. So so you can you can go by step step by step uh, as soon as you get new monster you paint them so it's not too much at the same time and the thing is that the mini are so ugly when they're gray i, I prefer the uh, set standees to uh, gray minis but so the you can only improve the situation, you cannot get them worse, so anything you do with the Mini will make them uh, a thousand times better than grey, so you paint uh, just a color on them, it's fine. You, you apply a shade, it's much better. You apply a dry brush on them, this is amazing. Or you can simply paint them black and do a dry brush of the base color and they will look amazing. So, don't be... Um, don't be shy, don't be, um, don't try to be, uh, to get them right, just, just try it because you can only improve the situation. And I if you mess up, it's not, it's not the end of the world, just leave them that. It, it, so, monsters are, mo especially monsters, it that doesn't matter if they're ugly, they're supposed to be ugly, so. Uh, as you can see here, the dry brushing, uh, I try to, to um, scrape them perpendicular to uh, the edges so, so that the highlight, you need to highlight the edges and the raised details, not, not the thing uh, in the holes. And if you apply more paint or you re remove less paint um, uh, for dry brush, you need to to control your end so that you're not uh, uh, pushing too much on the, the model with the brush. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the highlight color will will, uh, will reach the shadows, which is not good. And one of my ma mistakes that I did, I think, here and in other highlights is that I use the zenithal highlight to, uh, so that we kind of uh, have hard shadows on the, in the lower part of the model. Uh, but at the same time, I did uh, a, a dry brush, uh, the highlight in the shadow, which I probably should not have done. So uh, these are the two other monsters that I've used uh, the, the zenithal highlight technique, but this time I've painted it them white, so they're black and white. So I'm going to thin the paint with the exact same technique. So the, the 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 oily thing I was talking about uh, previously was is called from Citadel is Lamian Medium. This is kind of a transparent oil. Uh, I think it's better than what Army Painter offer. Um, maybe you should. Use. 
better to use that to thin the paint and make make the paint more liquid. So as you can see, uh, the the makeup brush uh, it's really cool because you can be violent with it. You can stab with it, and I have the same. Th I I've only ever used once. I have a I like ten in my package, but I've only used one in two two or one year. Anyway, I've used for a hundred, now more than a hundred minis, and it's still in perfect shape, so. One thing that, that I'd like to talk is about uh, the paint that, the, the paintbrush that are sold in the hobby stores. Um, uh, for I, I mean, uh, for example, in store that that sell Warhammer miniatures, is that Ar Army Painter and Citadel they're selling only um, real hair brush. They're not selling um, uh, 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 synthetic brushes. And the problem is that this is the the first mistake because natural brushes they're horrible to paint minis. They don't have any shape. Uh, as soon as you touch the model with them, they go all over the place. They don't keep their shape, and they're they're better with oil paint, not um, acrylic paint. So, the cheapest the brush, the better they are for minis because they they are really hard, and they they're more precise. So when you want to paint the model, they're they don't go all over the place, so it's more easy with a synthetic brush, a cheap brush, to um, to paint the details with them. And and for example, you paint the boot, but with a natural brush, uh, if you get on the edge, it they, they, you will paint everything around it. You you cannot uh, not touch the areas around them. I, I, at least it's very difficult. But with synthetic brushes, it's super easy because they're super hard and you don't need to care for them and once uh, citadel or uh, army painter brush is like 15 or 20 dollar and for 15 or 20 dollar you have 20 uh, synthetic brushes that are much better so this is my recommendation if you like working with uh, uh, natural brushes well it's okay i also use them uh, i think they they c they have a better reservoir of paint but that's about it, so I prefer synthetic brushes. So now I'm removing the, the as much as possible the paint so that we can see the, the highlight painted underneath, the black and the white. A little bit like uh, you do with Photoshop when you're trying to uh, multiply la layer together. So it, if when you do the dry brushing, it's it's preferable if you use a different color, a different paint bottle than um, than uh, the base color. Uh, Sometimes uh, what I've used, uh, I think I'm doing exactly that right now, is that I use the, the exact same color mixed with white. So this is the brighter version of the same color. But the problem with that is that white, uh, when you mix with them, it removes some, um, some um, it desaturates the color. So there's less of the color and more, uh, they tend to um, yeah, be desaturated. So it's better to use uh, another color that is brighter and even a little bit different. So uh, uh, even uh, for a model like that, maybe it, it would have been better with a, a, a yellowish something. So uh, using the same color, it works, but it's, yeah, I, I think it's, this is not the best thing. And I guess you want to know what I think uh, of the game uh, Chronicle of Dunagor. Well, it's uh, right now it's my favorite game of all time. It's better than Mage, Mage Knight was my favorite. Now it's Chronicle of Dunagor. 
the game is not perfect, um, and it's uh, it has some curious design, and there are things that at the beginning it was bothering me, but not so much anymore. And in fact, the thing that I was uh, accept, uh, I, I was uh, I didn't like, uh, I I I came to like them and appreciate them. So, for example, for example, the three D terrain. It's it's nice, but at the same time we don't have uh, a line of sight and things like that. So we have a physicality to the game, but at the same time the, the game is so streamlined that there is a lot of things that are removed from the game. So for example, the first thing is that you open doors, but there are not always doors, so you have to see them as a fog of war. So for example, you have a huge wall in front of you with a, a door in the middle. You open the door, and now uh, you see uh, from it was not a wall. So from everywhere, from there, you can shoot arrows and things like that. So this is a little bit weird in the beginning, and also that the monster they always hit. You don't roll for them. So the first the first time you play, you kind of what what is that? And once you realize th th that it makes the game uh, wor play much faster. And really, especially, in, I play solo, so the game is super fast. So you, there are still a physical element to the games, but the, they're 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 not as um, uh, fiddly as the other games. So this is probably the fastest game, uh, the fastest dungeon crawler, and the game is super fun. So I don't know exactly why, because I've played other games, but this one is. The, the most fun I've ever had with a, with my pants on, so I, I I cannot explain why, but this is the the funniest game. So it, just playing is absolutely fantastic, and uh, the story is um, is super amazing, super immersive. Everything is just perfect in this game. There are uh, little uh, details in the manual that are kind of. Uh, because everything is mostly it's, it's 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 a new mechanic that does not exist anywhere else so you so it is forgiven that not everything is explained correctly in the manual and and what is ironic is that the manual is in my opinion is the best manual ever made because it explain uh, in the context everything so they may explain something in the beginning and later in the in, in the manual they they explain the same thing but in another context so you always um, uh, so things are repeated and explained in, in a different light so this is amazing and also something else that I, I find amazing is that there's a kind of a playthrough uh, there's a manual that is called start here and when you open the box you take that manual, which is uh, this this pamphlet, which is uh, I think 15 pages, and you don't need to read the the rules. You start playing right away. So in the beginning, it's a uh, it's a uh, you just do what they, they tell you. Take this character, do this, do that, and it explains at every step why it is uh, uh, doing that uh, while explaining the rules. And at the end of it. They leave you to complete it yourself, so you need to finish it uh, your, by yourself. But at that point, you already know uh, the basic of the, the base of the game, and you know where to find the information in the manual. So this is really amazing because you get the game out of the box and you can play right away, and it's fun right away. So this this is something that I've never seen before. Maybe it exists in other games, but I've never seen it. But uh, a playthrough, a small playthrough, uh, explaining everything and the, the reasoning behind the, the movement of the character and things like that. So uh, Chronicle of Drunagor is, is really uh, an amazing game. It's, uh, it has many innovation, new innovation inside that game. So, um, but it is surprisingly uh, streamlined for a game that that big. And if you compare it with a, a game like uh, Storm Thunder, which uh, is more physically correct, I guess, because you can hide behind objects and things like that, there is line of sight. But the problem is that uh, 
you have to play with four characters in Storm Thunder. You cannot play with less than four. Less than four. So even if you play solo, you play with four characters. Chronicle, Chronicle of Dragor. I think it's the first uh, dungeon crawler that is truly solo. You can play with only one character. You can play with two, three, four, five, and the game adjusts uh, accordingly. So you do whatever you want. So I think I'm done here. So I, here I would just want to show what the, the pack of uh, makeup brush I, I, I bought for like five or ten dollars on Amazon. So these are also good for dry brushing, which I didn't use in the video. So I want to show you uh, uh, how uh, uh, a synthetic brush saved my life. So this could not have been done with a regular brush, uh, a re regular natural brush, because they're not hard enough to be able to reach and paint these uh, these hard to reach areas. So I painted the model fully assembled. Assembled. So, so uh, this this paintbrush saved my life. So and the thing is that they're super hard uh, hard to uh, to destroy. So uh, I've used I've, I've used this paintbrush a lot and it still looked like new. And I bought this paintbrush five dollars for all of them on Amazon here I'm showing if you mess up with the, the mini use this this stuff uh, uh, LA is totally awesome you drown the mini uh, inside for a couple of days close the lid you wait a couple of days and uh, this is to remove the paint this thing has been voted on uh, the on YouTube as the best uh, thing to remove paint on the mini without damaging them, damaging them. here uh, for natural brushes if you still want to use them uh, uh, there is a matte clay it's a thing to uh, to sculpt your hair your your uh, human hair so um, uh, somebody on the internet uh, uh, showed me this trick and it's it, it, it really does work uh, you uh, you apply this thing to the brush, and it will uh, you sculpt the brush uh, with with uh, to its uh, to its original shape, and you leave it like that uh, for uh, how long you want. And uh, so, natural brush will tend to lose their um, their sharpness uh, uh, really quick. So. Uh, and they 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 they're not as pointy as they were after a couple of use. So uh, you really use sculpting air a uh, paste uh, to um, to put uh, the shape back on the the brush. Here I, I think I've I've used too much and maybe this brush is uh, is too damaged, but it works. On uh, I'll I'll show you. It's um, it's working for uh, my my pointy little uh, citadel brush uh, that I'm going to show right now. Uh, I cannot get to the camera to focus on it, but uh, this one was uh, about to get thrown in the garbage, and I saved it with this paste. So um, maybe if you like working with natural brushes, uh, use this this trick. So I think uh, that's enough uh, for today. So uh, I won't make any other video about painting. So this is my my first and last last one. So. Don't subscribe and uh, please don't come back and go paint your minis. Good luck.